Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. I know we're starting a little late, so I'm going to go ahead and follow the order. Um, let's wow. go ahead and start with the roll call, please. Oh. <laughs> Adam here. Berlin here. Carrier here. Chavez here. Luciani here. Eka here. Hart here. Henry here. Mendrick here. Rutledge here. Salmon here. Like, yeah. All right, great. Thank you so much. Um, under Chairman Mark, it's really great to be back. Um, I want to thank this committee for all the fantastic work you did while I was out on medical leave. Um, I particularly want to thank um, Vice Chair Hart for taking this committee over, and I knew that everything would go smoothly in my absence. So, thank you all very much for your kindness. Um, next up is public comment. Do we have any this moment? Maybe not. All right, next we'll move on to the approval of minutes. I'll look for a motion to approve the minutes for July 13th, 2021. Second. Any questions, comments, or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we opposed? Motion passes. Next up, our procurement requisitions. First item, 2021-68, recommendation for the approval of a contract to Luminex software. For a contract total of $15,435 over a period of August 26, 2021 through August 25th, 2022. And this is a sole source item. Um, would you, do you have any comments you'd like to share about this item? Yeah, I mean, um, um, other than what you've already shared, there's uh, not a lot of additional except for the Luminex software is proprietary hardware, software and maintenance services. So we have to purchase both from this organization. So. It provides uh, uh, maintenance and software for our backup system, which is critical to uh, our technology environment. All right, need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next up, 2021-67, a recommendation for the approval of a contract to, and I'm so sorry, Kuska and Sons um, to furnish printed business envelopes for the county. This contract is September 1st, 2021 through August 31st, 2022 for a contract total of $27,750. And this is a third renewal. So moved. Any discussion on this item? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Lastly, we have TEP 0322-21, recommendation for the approval of a contract to SHI International Corp for the procurement of 200 laptops and 230 docking stations for a total of $258,398 and nine cents per lowest responsible bid. So moved. Second. All right, any comments, questions, or discussion on this item? Is there a reason that there's a different number from it, it is. So um, we purchased previously 30 laptops before. We, at that time, it, it was a rush to get those devices in to get them to the right uh, user. So we didn't buy docking stations. The docking stations are critical to ensure that machines are used not only in the office, but they can use them over at home. Any other comments or questions? We had a motion and a second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Next up, on to our presentation for our budget presentation. So if you uh, can't hear me through the, um, through the mask, just let me know. All right, so thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to present the uh, IT department FY 2020 budget. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, it's a rather lengthy uh, presentation because my goal is to reintroduce you to uh, the IT department, what we do and how we're budgeted, okay? So I'm going to move rapidly through a lot of the slides. If there are any questions, take a pause. Uh, just let me know and I'll take a pause so that you can um, ask questions if necessary. So the first slide 
covers who we are as an organization. So uh, IT has 59 uh, employees. We currently have 56 active positions and we're hiring uh, to, um, uh, to fill the active three. Uh, there are six verticals within the IT department, which are considered the core verticals. Um, and, they're, and in this particular slide, it's broken out into two different, I'm sorry, three different uh, groupings uh, so that you have an understanding of how we're made, but how we're also budgeted. So the first grouping, if you look at the very bottom, uh, is core IT services. So application services, which supports things like our ERP system, Infor and Oracle, also our mainframe application. Web services, which supports our website, uh, our mobile app and our intranet uh, infrastructure, which supports the, uh, the the county network, the servers where the enterprise applications sit, and other infrastructure things like tape backups and storage are all supported through that organization. And then also telecom for telecom services, so phone and, and mobile so cellular services. The item at the bottom, IT security, is new. It's highlighted in red because it hasn't been implemented, but it's critical to the success of the technology here within DuPage County. Um, IT security encompasses cybersecurity and general security for IT systems, right? It's critical. We need to uh, provide more, uh, more emphasis on security overall. So that's what that points out. It's not in place yet, but it will be in place soon. So the uh, fourth area is operations, includes uh, mainframe support, uh, computer techs, and service desk. I want to point out service desk, which I've implemented recently. The goal there is to, to turn our call center. So we essentially have individuals who take calls, they document the issues, and then they pass them on to more technical people, right, to address them. And a traditional service desk, a uh, service desk uh, is supposed to address at least 80% of the calls and then transfer 20% to the higher level, level two and level three people. That's our goal here, is to train our existing staff to be able to answer at least 80% of the calls that they receive or, and then triage them to the right location. So that's the emphasis on the service desk. The next area is RMS, which is Record Management System, they support uh, public safety and a law enforcement agency and support the systems uh, that support those organizations. And then GIS, our Geographic Information System area, which provides mapping data uh, for the entire country, 13 uh, different agencies. Uh, we provide data to 13 uh, different agencies and many municipalities, fire departments and dis uh, school districts on and so forth. The main support is GIS support, but uh, again, um, we don't have, I believe, a adequate um, data uh, uh, analysis team to look at all the data that we bring in here and um, use that data to either better uh, uh, manage our services or just answer certain questions. So we can do that with data analytics. You, you can do so much with it and tons of data comes through here. So our goal is to do that, provide better reports, better information to our agencies and to our departments so they can make better decisions. And if you look at the very end, our core IT services, seven our request this year, 7.8 million, uh, RMS 373,000, and GIS a little over 2 million. All right, so the, this one I won't spend a lot of time on. This just uh, shows you the funding sources of IT. Uh, the IT general is really the core services that I talked about. There's an increase, which I'll go into more detail about uh, later on. And then GS and DUGIS or RMS, um, though both of those budgets have increased, and I'll explain that in more detail. All right. So now I'm going to focus just on core IT, the IT department. So if you take a look at this, um, at the breakdown here, it basically shows that for professional services, telecom, and repair and maintenance, we've actually uh, decreased our budget as well as, sorry, the uh, printing services. And then for uh, equipment and supplies, we remain neutral. It's a small uh, amount, 89,000 for equipment and supplies. And then for miscellaneous, uh, 
for the profession, uh, personnel, software licenses, and maintenance, we uh, actually have increased our budget. The, the, the main reason is due to the support of COVID uh, or support of our staff uh, due to COVID. Uh, I'll um, explain that in more detail um, you know, further on <laughs> in the presentation. Um, that 22%, I'm gonna highlight and, and focus on that so that you fully understand exactly what is involved in that 1.4 million 22% this particular slide shows the variance over the past three years, which I thought was important. Uh, our standard IT budget is, uh, our request is 7.8 million, but in FY20, we were at 7.2. We dropped down to 6.4, essentially because of COVID. It's an anomaly, right? So not as much support provided because people were at home. Um, we only really dealt with four services. So it shows that from uh, 2020 to 2021, there was a sl slight decrease of 13%. The request this year uh, is 22%, 22.4%. But if you actually look at where we really were in 2020, which is more real, it's the real number than 2021, there's really only 8% increase from that year to this year. So that's what that shows there. All right, this next one uh, is a breakdown of the services. So I'll uh, run through them in groupings so that you have a better idea of what they are. This is a portion of the 1.4 million increase. So um, um, Okta, uh, iBoss, iFire, and CrowdStrike, all of those applications were applications purchased to either secure um, our users who are, who are connecting to our network remotely, secure applications, or secure our existing hardware infrastructure. So those are all related to security, so that we, so that our users will remote, uh, uh, work remotely without any issues or without worrying about hackers hacking into our system. The Citrix and VMware, those are applications that provide additional access to applications from a remote standpoint, and it increases performance. VMware is a virtual software that virtualizes our environment. So instead of us having to buy, say, 14 new servers, we can buy one server, virtualize it 14 ways, and it still provides the same type of service as the 14 physical servers. Um, and then the last but not least, Adobe Sign, um, so that people can sign remotely. Uh, I think there's 75, there were 75,000 uh, transactions, uh, digital signature transactions last year. So that's what that supports that allows for us to sign things remotely without having to come in and do a wet uh, signature. So the total uh, for this grouping, all in support of COVID, $686,475. The next grouping um, is slightly different and it involves a little COVID support, but really other things. <laughs> so the first one uh, is a request to uh, increase uh, salaries. So one is to uh, to uh, cover a um, an existing position that we have that just wasn't budgeted. So that we're asking for the funding to to fund that position that's already there. The second is to add on an additional position that we need, which is the computer technician position, because of the increase in technical support for several different departments that are requesting our services. This. Um, increase in support uh, has culminated over a three to four year period. So it's not just from 2021 to 2022 uh, or 2020 to 2021. It's over the past couple of years, we've taken on more support. There have been more staff members who have been hired to come in and support the district and we have been supporting them. So we need this particular position to, to support those individuals. And then the last part is uh, to cover the 2% unbudgeted COLA that was introduced in 2021. So that's the, the staffing piece. Second piece is the software licensing. Essentially, um, the bottom line here is that uh, in FY 2021, the budget was reduced by $500,000 in this particular line. Um, the, we have the obligations that we have to take. So the 403,500 is to cover those obligations for licensing agreements that we signed for over multiple years. Um, so it, it covers those things. 
And then last but not least, the miscellaneous in increases. So this is a small amount that covers things like uh, MBM. You all don't know what MBM is, the mobile management software, allows us to keep track of laptops at the end when a person is uh, service uh, is severed, they leave, um, we have ability to track it and shut it down so that it's not used or so that our data doesn't get out uh, to you know, any, and use anywhere or uh, use personally. So um, it's miscellaneous stuff like the maintenance of our heart, our health just uh, is included in that. And then some additional increases uh, on small other software package packages. For instance, there's a firewall increase. The firewall only costs 1500, it's like a 5% increase that we have to cover. So small things like that. So that's a total of $750,994, which makes up the 1.4 increase. All right, so the next one is our capital uh, funding request, very small request. There are only two items here. One request an additional storage. As I mentioned earlier, we need to back up our system. We store more data on our servers. We're running out of capacity. We need to increase it at, at 70,000. The second one is to increase a performance, uh, network performance. So there are switches that we need to, to purchase uh, for the 421 building that will increase performance and capacity of our network. Um, there's a total of $100,000 in uh, capital funding uh, uh, or capital funding request. One thing I want you to, to, to uh, note here is that uh, for uh, IT budgets, 20% uh, of the overall IT budget is typically spent on capital. In this particular case, this is less than 1%. It's less than 1% mainly because of CARE Act funding. Uh, we use that to, to buy things we would have uh, purchased through capital and also ARPA. Uh, this number will go up for sure. Uh, it could be more than 1% sometime in the near future. So I just want to highlight that. The next item is a highlight of our IT projects. I want to highlight uh, the tax, uh, private tax system. Uh, this particular application is in progress and on track. Uh, it's funded through infrastructure funds. The second item, <laughs> Oh, sec, second, <laughs> sorry, yeah. 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 our second item is website design. Um, I'm happy to announce that we have started planning uh, through the revamping of our existing website. Um, though that particular project will be funded by ARPA, uh, we're in the planning phase. Uh, our goal is to include all departments and agencies that have a presence on our website in that process. Uh, we're creating the scope. We'll issue our key, bring in a web development uh, uh, organization who will help us redesign, uh, you know, what we do and how customers see us. And then the third project is our IT wireless enhancement. Uh, we're essentially, uh, and I'm sorry, that's also uh, funded through ARPA. Uh, the goal there is to enhance our cell cellular signals in uh, buildings 503 and 505. I want to also highlight at the very end some accomplishments. It's important to identify, you know, projects that we um, that are funded and the fact that we implement them successfully. So we upgraded our VMware vSAN. That is essentially a storage uh, unit. Uh, we took it from a physical storage unit to a virtual storage unit. It allows us to do a lot more with it at the same cost or, or less. We implement a Citrix environment to allow us, allow our users to remote into uh, applications uh, remotely to um, access applications from a remote location. And then the last thing we did was we uh, implemented the countywide new phone system, the MyTail voice over IP system successfully. All right, so I'm gonna drill down with GIS and then Dujit, not gonna spend a lot of time on these, very high level. So GIS, uh, the point here is it's not funded by the general fund. Uh, it's funded through the GIS fees collected by the recorder of deeds. We increased it in FY 2020 from 15 to $20 per document. Um, decrease of 3.81%. Okay. Second one is DuPage Integrated Justice Information System. The actual, uh, that's a, uh, a team and committee and include systems and processes, uh, law enforcement and public safety together. 
but the what we support is the records management system. For this one also um, isn't uh, uh, budgeted through the general IT fund uh, or general fund. It's budgeted by 32 public safety agencies. Um, we are down uh, 9% uh, because there are uh, some professional services we no longer need. So we're giving that money back. All right, moving on, unless you have questions, I'm moving on to uh, the last two slides, which I think are important. These are really just informational in nature, but I think it's important to highlight them. Um, this slide simply shows that uh, this is uh, data collected uh, 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 from government organizations, state and local government organizations nationwide, and essentially just shows that there's been an investment in IT since 2016, and it has gone up across these organizations. I think the important pieces to point out is that uh, Deloitte did a study uh, of all uh, organizations in all industries, and it shows that they invest 3.28% um, uh, on average, um, banking being high at 7.16, 7.16, which makes sense because of security reasons, and construction is the lowest as at 1.51%. State and local uh, government organizations are spending about 4.6% and they're up since 3.9. Here in DuPage County, we spend uh, only 3.5% of our uh, operating budget on IT. So it just shows that there is some room for improvement. If we really want to get a bigger bang from our IT, we need to invest in it. And then the last uh, slide shows the investment in staffing. So the takeaway here is simple. Um, we are having challenges, uh, both attracting and retaining core talent, A plus talent, right? This slide on both sides, if you look at the graph, it simply shows that IT positions are in demand so people can go and get paid with their work. Um, we have an opportunity here to uh, try to retain our A plus talent here, try to look for A plus talent as well, if we can um, uh, increase salaries to a fair level. And that, that's all that I'm asking here. I believe that we do that, we'll keep existing talent, which is very important to maintain that knowledge and experience to attract better talent. And then the third part is if we, if we don't want to attract talent and um, we pay C-level salaries, you get C-level output. If you pay A level salaries, you get A level output, which makes it all productive. So that concludes the IT uh, department's budget. Any questions? Thank you, Thank you Jim. I, I just want to commend you for asking for an increase for these people. As we saw in the, the case study that we did, we are not keeping up with pay. And um, I'm glad to see that in your budget. I worry about people that have been the woman that we gave a 45 year award to. I'm just wondering what we've cost her over the long haul because we have not kept up with salary. So, thank you for putting that in your budget and asking. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Thank you so much. I really appreciate the look back. You know, we had new members to the board and some new electives countywide. So, I think that was really All right. Any old business? Any new business? Um, just from an economic development standpoint, I've been requested to add the DCBD to our website. So I was hoping that maybe we could make a note in the room here to get them added similarly to what Chief DuPage has, which is a link. Yes. So I appreciate that. Do you have the same thing for WorkNet too? Right I believe we do. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I think that'd be a great yeah. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Any other new business? All right. Without objection, we're adjourned.